Hey everybody, welcome to Burrotech. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about Udemy's new partnership as well as some of the stock price action. Okay, so let's take a look at Udemy here. So as you can see, it was up quite a bit and then it has gone down. Now, uh, if we go back to the month here, it's still coming off its lows, but down 32% from the high. And if we go back all the way here, we have about 28% down from the IPO price and 24% down from the opening, right? So you can see things are down a little bit. Now, one of the things I wanted to talk about um, today is Duolingo as well as the VIX here. So as you know, we had a huge sell-off uh, and the VIX is going down quite a bit here. And as you can see, it's down even 4% from the day. And if you don't know what the VIX is, it basically measures volatility. And if things are not going well on planet Earth, the VIX usually spikes. So as you can see, you know, on Friday, things were at an all time high and it's, you know, down 34% since. So a lot of people like to buy the dip and short the VIX. That's kind of like a, somewhat of a meme here. But, you know, the VIX usually goes up quite a bit. Um, you know, like for example, um, you know, we had, some, you know, some volatility here. And then this is obviously the start of the pandemic. So there's quite a bit of volatility. No one knew it was going to happen. And as you can see, this kind of went up here. So, you know, um, when, when it comes to um, when it comes to the VIX here, uh, it's a good indicator as to if it's falling, that stocks are probably going to rise here, um, right? So let's take a look at Duolingo here. Now, Duolingo is up quite a bit today. It's up nine percent here but let's take a look at the uh well the six month chart here so at its peak peak to trough i guess would be about 50 percent down and now it's about 45 here so remember if you were to purchase duolingo at 100 and it would go up to well 200 you've doubled your money right and so you know i think perhaps duolingo was a bit oversold um you know, again, Duolingo is my favorite e-learning company. They do everything right. Um, Duolingo is just very, very good at what, what it does. Um, so as, as you can see, um, even a very good company can have a 50% drop, right? It's just what it is. And so will Udemy have that? Well, 30% is, well, 33%. So, I mean, it's, it's not unheard of another 10, 20% down. And then you do have that 50% drop. Right. And, you know, the, the thing is, is like, if, if it drops to 15, then the people at Udemy headquarters should probably look at that. And if it drops below 10, then I think it's in trouble, but I don't think we're even going to get there. Uh, again, I don't think Udemy is a short again, shorting is the double black diamond of um of investing here but yesterday we uh udemy announced that um uh, they're partnering with skillsoft today they are uh they're partnering with a um leading african provider multi-choice now this is interesting because one of the udemy investors nasper is based out of africa and is as you if you don't know one of the things that udemy has done year over year over year is to produce like just growth at all costs and this is not unexpected as a lot of Silicon Valley companies will do growth at all costs for whatever the price. And you can definitely see that it's like, you know, if they push into India anywhere, as long as they get the growth. So, you know, they have targets to meet. So let's say their goal is to get 20 million people to sign up to the platform. doesn't matter where they are, just 20 million people. And that's just the way, way it is, you know, that's the, the way that those things is. And there's a lot of people in Africa, right? Um, if you don't know, Africa is huge, right? Like the Sahara Desert alone is, is bigger than the United States, right? So, this, so not only is like the geography huge, but like there's a lot of people in Africa, just like there's a lot of people in India, etc. So if, if you're trying to push... Um, if you're trying to push uh, any kind of, um, uh, if you're trying to get to those goals, you're, you're gonna want to add into those, those places here. Now, what that also means though, 
is that you're going to be selling at a lower price point because, well, people in India and Africa aren't as rich as, let's say, people from North America or Europe, right? So you're going to be uh, selling a lot less. Um, and for instructors, it means also a lot more support here. So now it's interesting about this here is that this is kind of like an entertainment group. And I think that's really interesting because I've always thought that these courses could be taken to the next level. Now, not in their current form, right? So when I look at any given course, whether it's like a, you know, a Python course, a web development course, a Photoshop course, or perhaps let's say, you know, AWS or cloud certification course, you know, I don't watch those the same way I watch a Netflix show. So enter, they're not entertaining at all, but they could be if, you know, if we had, well, if the marketplace was scalable. Again, most of the Udemy instructors are just solo instructors, right? They, they might have like a, like a video editor or, or like a marketing person, but at the end of the day, it's, it's really not that big. It's really not that big. It's more like a, a stand-up comic, right? You know, you have your stand-up comic and you might have a team that helps you out, but that's pretty much what it's like. Now, again, it could be so much better if the marketplace was scalable. Like, you know, I always, I always mention this. If imagine if Steam only had solo developers, right? Or like small teams of three, like the max team size on Steam or the App Store was like five people. Of course it wouldn't be as profitable, right? And what I find interesting is that like the video game industry is a very good comparison. Um, you know, back, like way back in the eighties, there used to be people that would develop a whole game by themselves, right? Like a lot of Atari games had one developer. They did the art, they did absolutely everything. And then uh, it was a quote unquote cottage industry. And, uh, and eventually it moved up to be what it is today, a complete juggernaut of an industry. Now the same thing could happen in e-learning, but, um, but when you go and um, uh, stifle the marketplace the way Udemy does, uh, it does not allow for that kind of growth, right? It's, you know, a lot of what happens within these, um, these companies and specifically these heavily investor-backed companies, um, you know, uh, what happens is, is that like they have a bunch of targets and goals and it's completely uh, the opposite of what, you know, the, the creators need to grow. So a lot of times I say that Udemy instructors are more akin to Uber drivers rather than let's say, um, let, let's say like a, like a game development studio. And I don't think at least cause this is what I do is there's so much more that could be done, but like it's very difficult to do. And remember that Shark Tank video that I did and I'd like to see more people doing that. And it would, and it, it is possible to do right? You're going to see a lot more companies start up and eventually the quality will be just so good and so different uh, from what Udemy has to offer that people are going to go elsewhere. And furthermore, there might even be a competitive marketplace that offers incredibly better terms. Now, I've mentioned this again and again and again, that if a public benefit company or a decentralized platform could could take out Udemy. Now the decentralized platform, probably not right away. Like Odyssey is not eating YouTube's lunch at all. Uh, but you know, it, it could happen in let's say 10 years or something. Like again, wh what's your time frame for investing in Udemy? I, I don't know what yours is. Is it five or 10 years? You have to be aware of all the cross currents, not only just with the market, but with the, in the e-learning company, uh, the industry itself, right? And there's companies like mine and like the one on Shark Tank, you know, that one in Shark Tank was supposedly going to do 500K of sales. Now, what happens if they do $5 million in sales? Well, that eclipses all of like, like the top Udemy instructor by quite a bit. Um, and like, why would you not do that? Like if I'm a company, which I do, uh, would I rather make $5 million by myself, go to investors and then do my own thing or put my course onto Udemy? And that is the key problem that I see with Udemy is that they should be attracting all those companies the same way the App Store or Steam attracts that. Now, of course, I understand that Apple's App Store is a deployment to a platform and well, Udemy is just selling basically video courses. I know there's a huge difference, but that doesn't mean that, you know, if I want to build a multi-million dollar company and leverage all of my growth with Udemy, 
then that's a good thing, right? And so I, I don't think that the approach of selling subscriptions to the personal side is a good thing because it just stifles all of the money that's going to the companies and more people will go outside of Udemy just like we did on Shark Tank. That, I can't tell you how much, uh, um, how important that is uh, that someone actually went on there for the industry. It is very, very exciting to see. And, um, and I'm very excited for them. I really wish those, those entrepreneurs the best. And if you haven't watched that Shark Tank episode, go watch it. It's, uh, it's, um, I, you, you can see it uh, here. It's very, very good. I, um, I, really, uh, I really do like it. Uh, so uh, I expect to see a lot more of that going in the future. And I expect to see a lot more growth out of uh, companies like mine uh, and you know other, other companies like that that will absolutely push the boundaries on what these companies can do in terms of money. And this is a really good thing. However, it's not as good for Udemy because those kind of people do not want to go to Udemy. Because again, would I rather make maybe $1 million if I'm the top instructor or 5, 10, 15, $20 million if I'm not the top instructor or if I do my own thing on my own site, right? So, I mean, it's pretty clear. And the, that's what Udemy should really do. They should really focus and make sure those companies, you know, advertise to, to bring people on their platform. Like the whole point of Udemy was to drive people to one place, the traffic people who like learning online into one location. That's really all it, it needs to be. And they're complicating things with Udemy for Business. Now, I guess Udemy for Business isn't necessarily a bad thing because you know they're taking the top content and moving it over. But the personal subscription, again, selling 44 million people to a personal subscription will only lead to short-term results and like maybe they'll they'll sell the company, but and maybe that's their plan. Uh, but again, if I were I would not buy that company if <laughs> until Udemy makes until Udemy gets four billion dollars on the marketplace side alone, right of revenue, four billion dollars. Udemy isn't really that good because that's kind of what Steam is. And I'm and I'm working on that video by the way. I'm going to be comparing Udemy to a bunch of different other companies, uh, co companies that are actually of similar size and you know, that are a little bit more profitable, that make slightly better decisions uh, than they do, right? And again, I think the core thing of Udemy, like the core, what Udemy is d doing is good. They just need to do things a little bit uh, more strategically. Uh, and I, you know, we'll see what happens. Now, again, yeah, tomorrow at, I think, 4 p.m. Eastern time, um, the Udemy is going to have their first investors call and I'm very excited to see that. Of course, on Thursday morning, I will give my analysis. So please be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in another video.